Alright guys, I'm going to do an update and a back to the basics video on water changes. I already did one, but I kind of lost the cable for my old or other camera, so I'm just going to have to show you again. So let me get this out of the way. Alright, so you have your tank. Uh, since it's a breeding tank, it doesn't look so good, but, you know, so you have your bucket or your jar or whatever you're going to put your water into, and you have your siphon tube. Siphon tube doesn't really matter how big or how la large it is. Uh, you don't want it to be too short because then you can't get it into the, the uh, wherever you're draining it to too long doesn't really matter. So, uh, just got this from an old siphon. There are siphon hose attachments that go on the end if you have gravel or you have a lot of fish and you're worried that you're going to suck one up. Those will prevent you from sucking things up and it'll let you stir around in the gravel and sand. So, uh, let's get started. Let's get started. So, you have your siphon tube, uh, and then you have your tank, and you have your end pipe drain, basically. So, there are a couple ways to start siphons. Uh, if you just have a tube, you're probably just going to want to do the old fashioned method put a cloth over the end if you've already used the tube, suck on it. Once the water starts flowing down, you just put it back in your. Uh, bucket or whatever as fast as possible. The other way is if you have an end pipe an end uh, pipe to it or a gravel cleaner, you can just shake it a few times and eventually the water will get up there. But since I just have the tube, I'm just going to use my shirt as a uh, cloth. Voila. So, for people who have sand, because I use sand because I just like to look at it, look at it. And most of my fish are sand. So you just want to skim the surface of it to make sure you don't get any sand in the tube like I just did. But you get all the uh, crap that's in here. Make sure you don't suck up any fish that are small enough. If you have a sponge filter, like it's a breeding tank, or just have a sponge filter in there for some reason, what I like to do sometimes is there's a lot of stuff near the sponge. You just stick the siphon tube onto the sponge, uh, make sure there's no exit, so everything has to go through the sponge, and that just makes the sponge a lot more efficient. That, and you can just stick it in there real quick to clean out the sponge a little bit, so that's helpful. So, you just keep draining. Um, if you're trying to spawn things, you probably want to do... 25, 30% to, uh, like 75% or 65%. People always say don't do more than 50%. Uh, that's just because people are worried if, about the shock that their fish are going to go through. But, uh, if you know, you're, if you have beginner fish, like, you don't have a piss, like, the complicated pistols, but you have tetras and, uh, Quarries, they, they won't mind if you do bigger water changes, especially if you're trying to spawn tetras, because they like really big water changes, because that stimulates. Alright, sorry about that. Uh, I had to do something. So, uh, you have your, your siphon tube in. This is a 10 gallon tank, so you, you only want to have, you want to, if it's a regular week, so, depending on the fish, you want to do water changes weekly, monthly, or every two months. Two months is for the really, really easy beginner fish that are really hardy and you barely have to touch them. Two, every week, or weekly, is for harder fish like apistos and rams. Uh, monthly is for common fish like quarries and most tetras and stuff like that. So, uh... If you if you if your siphon stops but you have a little loop, I always make sure I have a little loop right there. If you can't see it, I'll just get a close up on it later. But I always make sure I have a loop in between 
where the uh, the bucket is or whatatever. So in case the siphon stops or I do something and the tube comes out, there's still water in here. So all I have to do is pick the the loop up and then it starts the siphon again. So if you have caves, make sure you clean out the caves so the fish don't get uh, poisoned. And unless you're uh, switching the substrate, like uh, if you have gravel, actually I wouldn't recommend it with gravel, but if you have sand and you're switching it to, uh, say, dirt or um, a mono, Sakashi Amano stuff, uh, the Amazon substrate, then there are different steps you want to do. You want to make sure you get all the sand out. Probably not that many plants. Like, I'm sucking up a lot of Java, Java moss with this. That's because there's Java moss everywhere because it's a breeding tank. That's what I did. So, uh, as you can see, I did more. Here, let me get a close up here. So, I drained out the pipe, just put it to the side. And, uh, I'm not sure if this is actually a 10 gallon tank because it was more than 5 gallons of. Cause this is five gallons right here, and then I only went up to there, and it's more than two percent. So maybe it's like a seven gallon. Maybe I bit off. I don't know. Probably not. Uh, so I did about 50, more than fifty percent, because fifty percent would be like right here. So I did a little bit more so I can mimic rain, new rain coming in, washing out the, the bad stuff, so the fish gets stimulated. There's a male agassi. That's why I always have a lot of java moss. If you breed fish, make sure you have java moss in your tank. A whole bunch of java moss, especially if it's a smaller tank. Like, you can breed a pistos in 10 gallons, like I am trying, like I'm trying to. But you make sure you have a lot of plants and a lot of hiding spaces for the male and for the female. So, more than th three caves, this is a pair. Uh, and a lot of plants. Like, I have one cave in here. Or two caves in here, one's behind the Java Moss and one's right there. Uh, but I have that giant L of just Java Moss right there. Just Java Moss and uh, some Lutea. Uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, I think I've already filmed filling the tank. I'm not sure. No, I haven't. So, uh, I'll go dump this out and be right back. Alright, alright, so, I just, uh, just dumped it out in the tub. If you are on a second, third, or higher story building, then you're probably not gonna, and you don't have any out, like, terrestrial plants, then you're probably gonna just wanna dump it in the sink or the tub or the shower or whatever. But, if you are in, uh, uh, like, on the ground level and you have plants outside or a garden or whatever or you have a window and you can just shoot out the window or whatever but uh make sure you don't waste the water because I just wasted a whole bunch of good water I could have used for plants because I have a whole bunch of plants outside on my deck so I could have used them for plants but uh I didn't because I didn't want to lug it or just bring it all the way downstairs and just open the door and blah blah I just didn't feel like doing that too much work. There's another shot of the male Agassi. Agassis are sweet fish. Make sure you do not, or you're not a beginner, because they are sweet but hard. They, I've been having some luck with them right now because I haven't done water changes in forever. I haven't cleaned off the gel algae stuff. So. I've been doing pretty well. They're probably the fifth easiest uh, pisto. The easiest to pisto by no competition is the cockatoidy. Uh, hardest would have to be hmm, the newer wild type species like uh, I don't even remember what their names are because they barely they just got into the aquarium hobby and people are just starting to sell them so uh, so it'll be cockatoidy, boliri, boliri or something. Uh, Trifascidia, Macrochidae, uh, 
Vajita, if you can find it, because most uh, varieties of Vajita, like Vajita and Vajita 2, are just the uh, chain of Macrocaidae. You can see the similarities, so. Even though they are pretty close species anyway, so. Uh, UT is doing okay in here. I just gotta dose it. Oh, I just got, a, I got an idea. I asked some people on Instagram.com. I haven't got a chance to check. But, um, all of, as most of you know, I have Seacam Flourish. And I've heard about DIY root tabs because I don't want to buy root tabs. Because I heard they're really, most of them are really bad and they make a dust cloud and they're not good for sand and they don't actually put right next to the roots. So I'm wondering, if has anyone tried freezing Seacom Flourish or Seacom Flourish Iron or uh, any of the plant lines and then taking the cube or whatever and putting it right under the roots inside of sand? I just thought I would try that because I'm kind of tired of dosing the plants and I know that uh, Crips and Swords are heavy root feeders. I don't, I don't really feel like getting some mono stuff because they're overpriced. I don't feel like getting Seacom Flourish Sand because I just really don't want to go through the trouble of replacing the whole entire substrate. And I like it where it is right now. So, Has anyone tried that? And if you have, please comment and say, say, tell me what happened. And if you haven't, still comment and see and say what you think might happen. Let's get another shot of the male. Can't find the female. Oh, so I'll be right back with a filled bucket. Let's see. All right, back. So I didn't fill it yet, but uh, I got the supplies I needed for dechlorinating and stuff. So for soft water fish, I have my discus buffer. I also put a little bit in the feeder, so consistency stays down so I don't have to put that much in that tank. Got my Flourish, she can Flourish, Supplemental, not any specific, and my Prime. Wonderful Prime. So, I've got my measurement. So, basically, you're gonna make, wanna make sure that everything is dosed correctly. If you overdose some things, like, if you overdose Flourish, you're gonna get a little bit of algae, but it's actually kinda good. Overdose Prime is good, or er, is okay, but not necessarily good, because it gets rid of ammonia. Mm, overdosing Discus Buffer, or underdosing, is bad, because then it fluctuates the pH and it shocks your fish. So that's why you always have your measurement. So, uh, this is a really small tank. I only need a little bit of prime, a little bit of flourish, a little bit of disc bumper. And I'm, I'm only filling in, what, under five gallons, so. Uh, Alright, I'm going to get this filled and be right back. 